Hi guys, this is Krivili again with another product review. Today we are having a fountain pen review again and the pen we are talking about today is uh, another pen that I really like a lot and it's the Faber-Castell Ondoro. The Ondoro that I review here today is the graphite black version that's like sort of like a mate black resin barrel. The pen does also come in a number of other finishes. There was a white version available which I believe is discontinued. Then you get it in a very nice smoke, smoked oak wood finish, I guess, which makes the pen slightly more expensive. That one here costs, I think, around 80 or 90 euro, depending on where you get it from. I got mine from the pen company in the UK. Very friendly people with great customer service that I can only recommend. Um, so depending on where you get the pen from, the price may vary a little and then I believe you have to add maybe 20 or 25 euro to get a smoked oak uh, 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 version finish, if you like that. Then I think the pen is also available in orange, which is also pretty nice. And then there uh, was a new model that came out quite recently that is uh, sort of a brown-gray resin finish as well. But before we cover the pen in depth, let's have a look at the packaging that it comes with quick. It's like this typical... Faber Castell gift gift uh, gift gift wrapper or gift sleeve. You take the that white box out, and out comes another white box, uh, which looks very presentable. Simple white cardboard having the Faber Castell logo on top of it here, saying Faber Castell since 1761, 1761. Sorry, then it has like a little. A little leather sloop here or something like that you take that out and out comes the pen itself that then lays in here that's it just the pen nothing fancy but what more than the pen do you need uh, it comes supplied with a converter which of course is very nice and also something you expect with the pen at that price point and then you get an instruction manual with a couple of company and uh, information and some filling instructions for the different types of pens that they make because the pen also does come as a rollerball and I believe you can also get it as a ballpoint and so on. That's that. So that's the pen itself. The pen itself has a very uh, iconic design and like one pen that that pen reminds me of sort of is of course, let me get it, that one here, Caveco Sport. Uh, because it has the same, uh, I don't know, is it octagonal or what shape? Uh, so they, I mean, of course, this is a pocket pen and this is a full-size fountain pen. So like they're totally different pen types. But like I like shape-wise, I find it slightly reminiscent, at least, of the Caveco Sport. Yeah, as said, there's almost like, of course, it does look a little like a pencil. Because, of course, a pencil... Right, is also octagonal. Do I have a pencil around at the moment? Yes, I do have a pencil around. Here. So, yeah, as said, like slightly reminiscent or very reminiscent even um, of the shape of a pencil, which I find uh, beautiful. It's very comfortable to hold in the hand, by the way, that pen. Like this octagonal shape doesn't make it feel odd by any means let's cover the pen from top to bottom at the like the at the top we have like the finial here you see the Faber Castell logo yeah, I mean like you can it, it's very shiny very you can see even my whole camera setup and my head um, mirroring here my fingers here hi Faber Castell since 1761 as said um, then this of course octagonal shape here also very glossy you see everything you see the camera you see my glasses you see me in here very nice usable spring-loaded clip by the way that is spring-loaded that's very nice and flares out here a little bit which makes it very easy to slide the pen into a pocket very pocketable pen and then you just have like a small a small dot here at the back um which is i'm not sure what this is useful for but if you get a smoke out this oak wood finish pen then that here will be silver as uh, the cap here it's just like the same matte black matte made black um resin resin finish uh this black graphite and then you just uncap the pen like that in the beginning that cap here sits very very tight 
as you use the pen for a while, I've now been using this pen for a couple of months, it's pretty, I mean the, pen, the cap still sits very securely, it won't just like fly off or something like that, but it like, it, it starts becoming considerably easier to remove that cap. As said, it's not a screw-on cap, it's a push-on cap. Screw-on would probably be very difficult to make with that fountain pen shape. And then inside you have um, also some black plastic or black resin, which um, makes the metal cap um, slide on the pen here very, very smoothly. So that won't, you know, that won't, that won't, sorry, that won't scratch or something like that. It will just like sit very nice, very smoothly, very comfortably and snug on this pen. You see that finish here. This is like slightly roughened. You can even hear that. So that is not a totally smooth plastic or something like it's a smooth plastic, but it's not totally, you know, like it's not polished or something like that. So it has a, a little bit of a structure to it or something like that. Um, the pen itself is like a comfortably sized pen. I do a size comparison in, in a moment. You can post the pen, but since that uh, cap here is chrome and the pen is resin only, that throws the pen out of balance. Like it really does make the pen very long and very top heavy. I could not write with a pen like that would be very uncomfortable for me. But uh, there's no point of posting the pen because I do have larger hands. As said, size comparison follows in a bit. And the pen just lays very, very comfortably in my hand. That is really great. The section is a little short but it is super comfortable to hold, at least to me, since it's also resin uh, with the smoke oak, smoked oak version. I seem to have difficulties with that word. The section is chrome, and I'm not sure if that would be a bit slippery for me. Maybe. Uh, I've never tried that one, that oak one. But with this one here, the section is resin. And as said, because it does flare out here towards that end and it also flares out towards that end so you don't get like you're not you know you this this these those edges here they are round um so they're not they're not edgy they're very very comfortable to hold it's a short section but um you know there's not much room for you to vary your grip with that section here you you have to pretty much hold it down here but yeah, it's comfortable to me. Like I, I really like writing with that pen. Like even for very long writing session, I never tire with this pen here. It's really nice also because it's slightly lightweight, but still has a nice weight to it. Um, then of course the nib, those is those stellar Faber-Castell nibs, which I consider, you know, to be one of the best steel nibs out there on the market, to be honest. I mean, the Lamy nibs are excellent. Uh, Pilot steel nibs are also very, very nice. But those Faber-Castell nibs, they are also something else. I mean, they're definitely really, really nice. Has like those small, small dots on, which is this typical Faber-Castell nib design. No breather hole. Then it has a Faber-Castell logo on here. And then uh, F for fine, the size designation. Yeah, and then, you know, those small, I don't know what that is actually. Maybe it's just a design thing. Um, you can take the nib out, they're friction fit open the pen like this and sits a little bit tight and out comes the converter this is a metal thread here metal thread in here so that's not plastic that's all really well machined well built metal very nice a quite large converter that holds a fairly generous amount of ink. I do have Faber-Castell Cobalt Blue in here, which is a really nice dark blue. And with that generous amount of ink and the fine nib, you can really write with that pen for a pretty long time. One thing that I have to point out, do you hear that? There is something in here. I don't know what that is. It rattles around a little bit. It disturbed me in the beginning because if you do not screw on the pen very tightly, that does rattle around a little when you write. Um, until I found out that if I screw on the section, that's why I had a little bit difficulties to getting it off at the moment. If I screw that on a little bit tighter, you still hear that rattling a little bit, but at least you don't hear it anymore when you're writing. So somehow the converter presses against some metal part in there, or I don't know what it exactly is. 
It might be disturbing maybe if you have just one short international standard cartridge in. I don't know if you like, if I've never tried it, if you put two of them in, if that then maybe stops, but that's just one thing that I wanted to point out. Like I found that a little bit annoying in the beginning until I found out that if I screw that section on a bit tight, there's no problem. Yeah, you can hear it, but you won't hear it with writing movements because they're actually not writing like that. Yeah, but if it you put it on, if you put the section on not 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 tight enough, if you don't put it on tight enough, you will be able to hear it. All right. Um. So let's get to a quick size comparison with that pen, and I'll compare it to my standard reference pen, the Lamy Safari. So kept the pen is a little shorter than uh, Lamy Safari. Unkept. It is interestingly about the same size than a Lamy Safari. And then I won't post the pens because they both get, yeah, very long posted and uh, also the Ondoro does get top heavy. So I think it's fair to say that the Ondoro is uh, a full size fountain pen. The Lamy Safari is a slightly longer fountain pen. Uh, but the Ondoro is a little bit shorter, but as said, like I have slightly larger hands. I find the Safari very comfortable to ride with, but I do also find the Ondoro very comfortable to ride with. I have a smaller pen here around as well. Let me throw that in as well. The M400 Brown Tortoise, which is really a small pen. And you see lengthwise, they're about the same. Capped or uncapped doesn't matter. So yeah, you could you could probably say that it's about the it's about the length of a Pelican M400 or M200 for that matter. They're about the same. They're about the same length. Uh, Ondoro might be a little longer, but uh, it's definitely more comfortable to hold for me than the M400 because yeah, it's a it's a girthier pen. Like the section is wider, the section is girthier, so it's it's a lot nicer. It's a lot nicer to hold. One thing that I could also say is like that that cap, of course, is like as with I have another Faber Castell pen here. Like that seems to be a Faber Castell thing. That's the emotion here that I've reviewed a couple of months ago. Uh, making things very glossy and shiny. So of course that does pick up fingerprints like crazy. But I don't find it much of a deal. You know, you just wipe it off. Like I mean, it doesn't bother me anyway. But for m some people, might be bothered by that. Oh. If that is something that really disturbs you, right, uh, then, you know, you see that, then that pen might might not exactly be for you, but to me it doesn't disturb me. Or you just, as said, wipe it off. So what's left to do in the end is a writing sample. And um, of course, what we expect is nothing short of perfection of those Faber-Castell pens. As said, those nibs. faber Castel, Ondoro, this is a fine nib, uh, nothing short of perfection, they're slightly on the wetter side, line variation a little bit, this is no pressure, it's a bit more pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you can get out some line variation. But as I always point out with those nibs, this is probably not how I would write with them in, you know, daily life. But if you would, then you see, puts down a lot of ink then. But um, yeah, I mean, you can get out some line variation if you would, if you would like to, if you would like to add a little bit character to your writing. You can do that. Very smooth writing experience. Those nibs are really, really, really good as said, and I can only repeat myself, probably some of the best steel nibs out there on the market. So there is definitely nothing to complain. If you search for a very, very nice writing experience for a pen that has a very unique design, one that uh, will be recognized straight away, cap seals very tight, pen doesn't dry out, nice size, there's, for me personally, there's really nothing to complain about this pen. And as always, I hope this review was useful for you and to you. And I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.